Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View. Well, the fake news media is totally out of control, no shock. Between witch hunts, hoaxes, censorship, and outright lies, it really should be no surprise that a lot of these outlets are failing. But that's not stopping them from constantly attacking everyone and anyone from whom they feel threatened. Uh, or quite frankly, who goes against their narrative, or who is simply in the way of them pushing their agenda. Now, as you can imagine, none of us in the Trump family are unfamiliar with these type of attacks. We've become, they've become commonplace for us. Luckily, tonight, we have the privilege to be joined by one of the media's biggest targets, my husband, Eric Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, honey. I am one of the biggest targets, unfortunately. Yeah. Fortunately or unfortunately. Well, you know, here's the thing is that we have become so used to to this. We if you don't experience it, you don't understand that the way the media by and large manipulates a story, the the false narrative that they try to push forward, uh, the way they attack us. If you haven't experienced it or you, yeah. you aren't close to somebody like us, you just would believe what they put out there. Now, fortunately, there are about 75 million Americans who I think saw how, how bad the media had become. Now, one of the most recent examples of these attacks from the left was just this past weekend when the fake news media attacked a charity organization that rescues dogs. Now, I happen to play an incredibly small role in this organization. Um, they asked me to be their honorary co-chair starting in 2018. They have been having events at Trump properties from well before 2018. I am not on the board. I don't make any decisions. I literally show up to an event to encourage people to donate money to dogs that need homes, that need to be rescued. They rescue dogs from around the world. Um, it is so outrageous. And, and by the way, I'll say one other thing. You write a check to that organization, oh, yeah. right? Which... I, I pay for my own plane tickets to fly down to this event. I actually, this past weekend, had to fly my mom to New York because I don't want to say who, but somebody couldn't fully handle the brunt of dealing with two children while I was gone. Okay, we're talking about a plane ticket for my mom, plane ticket round trip for myself, donated money uh, my, of my own that I always have to this organization for the you know several years that I've been involved with them. And then the fake news media, Huffington Post, again, no shock, uh, put out this really ridiculous story that suggested that because I was this honorary co-chair, that I was, quote, funneling money from this dog charity... Sure to your dad, to, to Donald Trump. Like, are you kidding me? This stuff is so crazy. And here's the thing, and I know you feel the same way. We can take it. We always do. But here's where I have the problem. I have the problem when it impacts other people, when it impacts charities, and no one knows better about that than you. Yeah. Because in the beginning of your dad uh, being president of the United States, I think before he even took office, after he was elected, you were forced to step away from a charity that you started at 22 that raised money for children dying from the most terrible diseases known to mankind. All of the donations went to St. Jude Children's Hospital, and it was terrible. For people that don't know, maybe fill them in on that. Yeah, well, listen, it was very simple. You remember, I, I went through this whole thing, but... Uh, it yeah, I started a foundation for St. Jude Children's Hospital. I think the best pediatric cancer hospital in the world, by far, um, bar none. They're in the middle of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, they take in the worst stage four cases of cancer, and they're miracle workers. What they do, the, the, the lives they save, they're incredible. They're incredible. They if you are. go there, and you've been there with me many times. Many if you, times. If you go there, you will never, you'll just never be the same. I mean, th thinking of what these little innocent children, the age of our kids, you I know, know, one, three, sometimes older, sometimes younger, what they're battling through, the leukemias, the this and that. And St. Jude is the best in the world at saving their lives. And I started a foundation called the Eric Trump Foundation at, you know, actually even earlier than 22, at 20 years old. We ended up raising well over $20 million at the lowest expense ratio in this country. Our cumulative expense ratio is 9%. Off of Excuse that me, let me just pause you there. The lowest expense ratio of any private yeah. charity in the United States of America. Go on. Yeah. Well, at, at least one of the absolute at, at the lowest. Our credit card processing was 4.5%, right? So this was 9% total expense ratio. And because Hillary Clinton was getting killed every single day in 2016, they decided to come after me. So 
a kid with, 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 with big ambitions, wanting to save the lives of others, they attacked savagely. Uh, they went to the attorney general. They had the attorney general launch, launch investigations. Obviously, they didn't go anywhere because it was perfect. It was run perfectly. But I had a 9% expense ratio. When you look at the biggest charities in the country, you know, and there's many great ones, but look at the biggest charities in this country. Their expense, ra- their expense ratios are 50, 60, 70%. In so many cases, there was one of the biggest, which is one of the most famous, where they literally have a 90% expense ratio. Look at the expense ratio of the oh Clinton Foundation. I'm not even going to throw out the name because I don't want to do that. But look at the expense ratio of the Clinton Foundation where G4s were getting paid for. You know, people were flying lavishly all around the world eating caviar dinners. Literally, I mean, we were flying coach and eating McDonald's, right? Because yeah. we wanted every single penny. We didn't have a paid employee for the for, you know, right? I know. But, but these people want to destroy lives. And... Effectively, what they did to me, right, where they say, Eric, Trump steals money for it. We, we, we held the events at Trump Properties because we because paid. Because why wouldn't you hold them at your own Because we'd have 600 kidding? people, and we could call up every food vendor, and we could call up every, you know, ice and sculpture you did. person. And I remember you, I remember Eric being on the phone with people. I, I never saw you work harder yeah. than you did to get pennies off of a dollar from, you know, major companies. I, I don't even want to name names, whether it was for beverages, whether it was for performers. And we was... had people donate everything because every other, everything went to the kids, and that's what it was all We'd about. We'd call up the performers from The Apprentice, right? John yeah. Rich and all these great guys, and they would come in, and they would put these concerts on that were phenomenal. We would call up our food vendors and say, listen, you know, we give you guys a lot of business. Could you help us out? Could you help out the kids of St. Jude? Do you mind donating food to this wonderful event? And every single time they did it, that's why we had, we didn't have a paid employee. We'd be upstairs stuffing envelopes, myself and, you know, a bunch of friends. And me. And, and, and you. <laughs> Setting and, up the events, the, the couple of days leading you know, up to it. We always had a big, this, and yeah. And, and you know what? We did that out of pure love, and they wanted to destroy that. And the first year, I'll never forget, the first year we raised $250,000 roughly. The next year we doubled it, and we doubled it, and we doubled it, and we doubled it. And we got such great momentum. And then all of a sudden, 2016 comes along. Eric steals money from charity. I mean, these people are disgusting. And by the way, it's the Washington Post. Uh, it's, 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 you know, it's Huffington it's, Post. Huff, 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 Huffington Post. It's, it's Forbes. It's all these people. They hate my father. They hate his platform. They hate that he has a voice to millions and millions of Americans. And they'll do anything to try and destroy it. And they did that with you. So you paid for your own plane ticket this weekend. You went down. You raised millions of dollars for, for shelter animals that were otherwise going to be euthanized. You made a big contribution of your own to the organization, quite frankly, anonymously, um, because that's who you are as a person. You spoke. You were away from your kids for the entire weekend. And then they'll come up with a story saying that, you know, we profited off of it. And, and it's, it's absolutely disgusting. It's who these people are. And you see what the Washington Post, you see what the Washington Post did with the, with the whole call with Georgia this week. I mean, every single day, every single day they take a story and they manipulate it and they change it. And they'll reach out to quotes from 100 people. And by the way, so oftentimes I'll get the emails. Hey, this guy just reached out to a quote from, quote from me. By the way, this is what I sent back. You know, the Trumps are wonderful people. They work very hard. They're incredibly honest. Yeah, they don't honest. print those quotes. And don't never have it. I ever those seen one of those anywhere. quotes but, in the paper. But they will print the nasty negative stuff because they want to get Trump. But and, and that's their MO. That's they, all they care about. They also, the problem that I have here is that there is there's almost no retaliation for people like us, which is why we've decided, like, look, you could say whatever lies you want to say about us. We know who we are. are the people we love and who are close to us know that we're good people. But once you become a public figure, you can no longer sue when people lie about you, you know, on television, in the newspaper. The problem I have is the damage is done by these people, and they don't care. They don't care that they wrote lies. They don't care that there are thousands of dogs that might die at, at their hands because they hate Donald Trump so much that they would rather tarnish the image of this incredible charity. By the way, Big Dog Ranch Rescue happens to be the largest cage-free, no-kill shelter in the United States of America. The job that this organization does is, is above and beyond any, any charitable organization that rescues dogs uh, for which I have, uh, you know, been involved, uh, that I've been involved with ever. And it was an honor to go down. But, you know, that's the problem, is it doesn't even matter now if they write a retraction. They don't care. No, but here, here's, the what, here, here's what happens. I mean, and, and look at, 
Look at the Mueller. Look at Witch Hunt. Look at Russia. Look at all these things, right? Russia was a total hoax. It came out that was a total hoax. Mueller found absolutely nothing, right? I mean, they found out that it was fake dossier that was paid for by Hillary, that was paid for by other political operatives. And guess what? They don't write a retraction. They literally, there were people that, 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 that won Pulitzer Prizes for their journalism writing about the Russia investigation, a, a, an investigation that was based on nonsense. Sort I mean, of like the Emmy winner, Andrew Cuomo. When, when do they give those back? When do they give those back? When do they apologize? And by the way, I can't tell you, honey, how, how many times you've seen it. How many times they've written a, there was a, there was an article by the Washington Post, right? The Washington Post is Shocker. probably the worst of all, right? They've never written a single nice story about my father, and it's owned by Jeff Bezos and Amazon, and he hates my father because my father didn't believe in many of the kind of monopolistic things that they were doing. So every single day he hammers them. And you know what's really interesting? Every senator that will bow down to Jeff Bezos, he'll put on the, the front page and they'll get these beautiful glowing articles, but yet a man who creates peace in the Middle East, and a man who cuts taxes, the largest taxes, and the person who has the lowest African-American unemployment, the person who does the greatest with the stock markets, and the person who puts the most Fights people to work. children, and, and, you know, And like... everything else that, that, that my father did, right? You know, rebuilds the military, takes care of our vets. They will bash him every single day because he's not in the pockets of, of the wealthiest business owners anywhere in the world. That's why they have... Jeff Bezos doesn't own the Washington Post because he likes journalism, that he thinks that the media is going to make him serious money. He owns a Washington Post for influence, so he can pick apart the people he doesn't like, and frankly, so he can control them. He, he knows that if any senator or any congressman votes against his interest, guess what? They'll be on the front page of the paper the next day, and they'll get absolutely pummeled before, because of it. And, and it's sickening that people don't see this, but the Washington Post did this article. I'll never forget it. My father happened to be in L.A., and I happened to be overseas somewhere. In fact, I think we were in the Caribbean together. It's like one of the few days oh. that you and I have ever gone away. Wow. And there is an article that Eric Trump rubbed shoulders with local zoning officials in California. <laughs> I'm in the Caribbean, and we're talking about 3,000 miles away. You know, while President Trump visits property, and I literally, I'm reading this on my phone, and it's literally one of the few times we do a little uh, I know, getaway. I don't even remember when this happened. And uh, Sounds like yeah. a great trip. I so hope sure I enjoyed enough, I, I, I write to the, you know, I write to, 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 to one of the, you know, one of the, the writers of the story who's just a terrible person. I mean, it's just terrible. I told him, I go, I'm not even in the state. I haven't been in the state at all. I'm not, they don't I'm, care. I'm not on the trip. Excuse me, but they you know, don't care. When they do the retraction, they don't that care. will be a front page story. When they do the retraction, if you're lucky, meaning the, the one in a hundred times they, they'll actually do the retraction, you know where it ends up? It ends up on the dead last page. If you yeah, even get lucky and you even get it, a it retraction, doesn't matter. it ends up on the dead last page. And it's disgusting and it's sickening. And journalism, I mean, journalism in this country is, is truly, truly dead. There are there are laws in other countries, anti-slander laws, where if you post something that's that egregious, where you know he's rubbing shoulders with real estate officials while his father's in office, and I'm not even in the state, I'm not even in the country, there's ways, there's libel laws in other countries. The U.K., for example. In the U.S., you can't do anything about that. So they can say anything they want about you. They can take a charity and they can say they, they paid Mar-a-Lago $250,000. Guess what? They didn't come close to paying Mar-a-Lago. It wasn't a third. Not even of, close. It wasn't a third of that amount that they paid. But they're happy to print this, and nothing can be done about it. And, and the media is sick. They're happy to kill dogs. They're happy to kill children. So I ended up giving away the foundation. I gave it to my best friends who now run the foundation. When I was raising literally three, four million dollars a year for dying children. But that's the thing is, is look, you would think that there could be something that brings us all together, that we can leave politics out of. My goodness, I don't know. Saving kids with cancer, rescuing no. dogs that are bound for euthanasia or, or abused beyond belief. You would think that there would be some things that would be off limits. There would be some things that would bring us together. And look, you and I have never taken a penny from a charity. In fact, we, we've, I'm happy, and, and we don't talk about it when we do it, by the way, because we don't need the accolades. We don't need the acknowledgement. We do it because we, we like doing it, and it's the right thing to do, and it feels good. But the bottom line is, whether the Washington Post or the Huffington Post likes it or not, to have Eric Trump at your, at your event, to have you know a Trump come to your event and speak, maybe it draws a few more people in. Maybe you can raise a little more money. I know that the Eric Trump Foundation certainly raised more money when you were in charge of it, when your name was on it, than it does now under its its new name. And, and that's because, you know what, whether they like it or not, 
the name draws people in and they, they'll donate more money to good causes. But these people are so obsessed yeah. with hating your dad, with hating yeah. everything that he's he's done. Is it really more important to have a political vendetta against somebody than to help kids with cancer? To them, yes. Than to help dogs? To them, yes, if you have an R behind your name. If you're a Republican, if I was a Democrat, honestly, for... I mean, how many kids, and I'm not, I'm certainly not shooting my own horn, but how many kids at the age of 20 decide to, you know, form an organization that... Zero, except Eric you know, Trump. Literally, I mean, I married you. we donated an entire wing to St. Jude. It's, yeah. it's the ICU and surgery center. The sickest children in the world, bar none, are in the surgery center that... It's the most cutting-edge you know, ICU and surgical center myself in America and a couple of young friends yeah. who received nothing, who put our blood, sweat, and tears into this, built this incredible surgery center at St. Jude for the sickest children in the world. And they attack me relentlessly for you. You raise millions of dollars for animals. You've been the greatest advocate for, you know, for shelter animals who would otherwise be, be euthanized. You've been so incredible, yet they'll come after you and they'll savagely, savagely attack you. And it's disgusting. It's only because you have an R after your name. They don't like you. They don't like my father. They don't like who we are. They don't like that we have the Trump name. They don't like that we were effective. They don't like that the guy did a damn good job in Washington, D.C., and then you see this guy now. The guy can't get a sentence out without, you know, he can't walk across the, the South Lawn of the White House without, you know, and, and they, they have so much animosity that they'll do anything and they'll say anything, and there are zero ramifications for what they do, and it's, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. It has to horrible. change. It's it really has change. to change. But you know what? It's not going to change until people start calling out the basis for owning a paper only for one reason, and that's for exerting influence. And you know what pisses me off, honey? And, and, and I'm sorry to get worked up about this, but... This is a place we're, to we're do it. We're already there. We're here. China is laughing at us. China is absolutely laughing at us. You know what China's doing? They're focused on building the biggest navy in the world. They want to dominate our Pacific fleet. There's no question about this. They're trying to build intermediate-range ballistic missiles to sink our aircraft carriers and our other, right? They're trying to control space. They're trying to control electronics. They're going out and they're trying to control all the rare earth minerals around the world. They're buying up every single mine and every single port, and they're bribing every single official in, you know, every African and, and you know, in many other countries as well. You know, they're trying to buy up the entire world. They're spying on us. They're stealing our plans for our fighter planes. They're hacking into our companies. They're ripping off our technology. They're stealing our manufacturing. Uh, they're making everything more expensive uh, for, for the United States. They're certainly behind so many of the, um, you know, uh, they don't, they're not thrilled that we've got the largest gas reserves in the world, that we've got the largest oil reserves in the world, because those are resources that they could only dream of, Right. So they sit there and they have this checklist, which is how are we going to be the dominating power by 2035? How are we going to do it? Right. And they go, you know, bang, 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 bang. We're going to control all these sectors. We're going to do all these things. We're going to steal all these technologies. These are the things that we're going to do societally. You know what we're doing? We're being attacked by the Washington Post That's for raising tens of is. millions of dollars for charity. That's right. We're being attacked by Forbes because they have nothing better to do. We're being defamed every single day. You know, Nancy Pelosi is trying to impeach my father. After my father is no longer even in office, they're trying to rig elections. They're, I mean, this is what they're doing in this country. It is a waste of time. They, they're trying to raise taxes. They're literally closing down the oil reserves of this country. They're shutting down pipelines. They're leaving the southern border, which has hundreds of miles of wall built because of my father that was working impeccably. They'll have the wall slats sitting there, sitting there like my phone is on the ground. Like on the ground. They yeah. have to put up two more slats of wall or three more slats of wall. They'll have 100 miles of wall going this way. They'll have 100 miles of wall going that way. And one, one missing. And they have on the one ground. little gap, and they'll order them. You immediately stop putting in that wall. They won't even let them close in that gap. I mean, these people are truly sick, and China is going to eat our lunch. If this, if this is the attitude of this country under the Biden administration, under the corrupt media, China will absolutely be eating our lunch. We don't stand a chance against them. We better get our priorities in line. We get a, better get honest about the true issues of our country. We better have fair journalism because that's what's supposed to separate us yeah. from these other, you know, countries around the world, these other third world countries, these other places of, of communism that lack law and order. Yeah, they're called banana republics. That's, that's what's that's supposed what we, to separate us from into. them. And honestly, it's um, in many cases lately, we're not much different. We're well, not much different. Normally, we take a commercial break. 
But I feel like we're on such a roll here. I'm just going to roll right through this with with uh, my husband, Eric Trump, here joining us, if you've just joined. Um, it came out yesterday, and you brought this up a, a few minutes ago, that there was an absolutely fabricated phone call between yeah. your dad and the secretary of state in Georgia. And the Democrats, of course, pounced right on this. Uh, this is what allowed for the second impeachment hoax. Um, it, it, it's really outrageous. Of course, Washington Post used an anonymous source um, that reported that your dad pressured the Georgia secretary of state's chief investigator, yep. Francis Watson, to, quote, find the fraud, promising that she would soon be a national hero. Now, outlets, of course, we know how this goes. One outlet posted, they all run behind it, and then they all, nobody fact checks, nobody cares. All these outlets, ABC News, PBS, USA Today, CNN, all these outlets pick up the Washington Post story. They run articles with the fraudulent quote emblazoned in the headline, and now it comes out that it was all fake. Yeah, they that were. they made all of this up. They did not have the actual transcript of the phone call as it happened. They just picked apart pieces that they liked. Do you think they're going to be called out on this? Are there any ramifications for of these they folks? Will. No, there's no ramifications for them. Because if you're a public figure in this country, it's very tough to sue. It's very tough to sue for slander. I mean, the rules don't apply to you. And it, it's we have a First Amendment right in this country. And there's nothing more important. Meaning the First Amendment is, is the First Amendment for a reason. Right? But you don't have the First Amendment to lie. Hey, guess what? The, the whole Ukrainian hoax, that was based on a conversation as well. My father released the conversation because it was a perfect conversation because they had people who were sources. Sources say that on the call he said X, Y, and Z. My father goes, I never said that. And by the way, here, you know, and, 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 and thank the Lord that the White House taped that call. Yeah. And he could literally, you say, know, here it is. give the digital Knock file of, of, of this thing. But they did the same thing there. So he said this. A, a source says. Now, now, they never name the source. They just pick words Always that they anonymous. would anonymous. otherwise say that Trump would hmm. say. And they hand it over. They spoon feed this. This is headline news every single day for the Washington Post and the New York Times and CNN and MSNBC. And they all run with it. And they're all distributed the same talking points. It's actually it's amazing when they talk about this. They all use the same. That's the highest Seems form of like treason. like a coordinated and, effort doesn't it? It seems a little bit like, well, you know what the Washington Post did, though. They were called out because the Wall Street Journal actually posted the full audio, and it, it very clearly shows that, that the story that the Washington Post ran was ridiculous. Now, all they did, the Washington Post, and this is yeah. all they do, and this is all they will ever do, is put at the top of the story a little, like, asterisk, some of this was misquoted. Well, the damage is done, and they don't care. They really don't care they won't run, what they've done. They won't run that retraction on the same placement as the article was originally of course, in, right? They, no. they, they won't do it. They'll, they'll stick it at the very, very back, or as you said, they'll put the little asterisk in there. And guess what? They got their clickbait, and that's all these people yeah. are looking for. They got that's right. They got their clickbait, and the damage is done. You know, and, and, and they slandered a person who's a, you know, a, a rival of a very wealthy guy. And that was exactly the intent of, of the person to do so, despite the fact that they'll sit back and they'll say, no, no, no. We really believe in journalistic integrity and we do not make editorial decisions. Mm. This is what they always say. They have one goal in mind and you see it over and over again. I mean, look at that writer in The New York Times who came to my father's defense. I forget what, even what it was, it was a couple of weeks ago. He came to my father's defense and said, hey, he did a really good job. Guess what? The person was forced. Gone. The person was forced out of gone. the New York Times. Immediately and, gone. Um, it, yeah. it is. It is. It is so sad. And I think you know one, one of the things that I think my father did a great job of in office was actually, and, and frankly, even before office and now out of office, is actually really teach America how dishonest well, journalism. He, ex he exposed them. Journalism is, yeah. and, and it's and it's different journalism that we had fifteen years ago, it and is. twenty years ago, and certainly thirty or forty years ago, where you might have one nighttime show. And you had an anchor, and they went, and they, you know, they gave something that's fairly. But hey, listen, there's always probably a little skew to to, to media. Now with a 24 hour, you know, and, and on, by the way, on both sides, yeah, the eight o'clock hour has to be more sensational than the seven o'clock hour, and the you know nine o'clock hour has to be more sensational than the eight o'clock hour. And if you don't do it, you don't get the ratings. And if you don't get the ratings, you're going to lose your contract, and somebody else is going to fill that slot. And it creates a slippery slope of nonsense. I mean, look on Twitter, look on look on any of these social platforms now. It's Read the read the headline, and then actually go read the article. Most of the time, the headline it, it, is it a has, total yeah, misrepresentation, but they're doing it because they yeah, want... Yeah, they want you to click on there, and they want to get your... And unfortunately, we're the largest targets of this 
in the world by far, bar none. And it's why they'll attack your charity, and it's why they'll try and destroy my ability to raise millions of dollars for dying children who, who frankly need the help. Um, but let me ask you this. I, I thought, gosh, maybe I'm crazy. Wasn't the goal all along to get Donald Trump out of the White House? Wasn't the goal that we didn't want Donald Trump in charge of the country? Because don't you don't rem- forget what they said before your dad got elected. The stock market was going to crash. We we're going to bankrupt America. We would be in endless wars. All the opposite of what ultimately happened when your dad became president. He exposed them all. He exposed the swamp. He was fighting back and fighting for the American people. So, gosh, I thought the goal was they were attacking your dad because they wanted to get him out of the White House. He's gone. In case nobody noticed, Joe Biden, and Joe probably didn't even notice himself, is president of the United States right now. So you got what you wanted, yet they are not focused now on the current occupant of the Oval Office, you know of the White House. You know why? We have illegal immigration Honey, crises going on Joe on our Biden southern is border. Joe Biden is boring as shit. I, let me just say it. That, that's why they're not, <laughs> I, 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 hate to, I hate to curse on a podcast, but that's why they're not focused on the guy. The guy can't get out a word. His policies suck. His policies are frankly anti-American, right? You see, he still hasn't talked to the press, and he's been right. in office for I don't the, even the, know the longest, 55, the longest in one hundred and fifty something years that a president hasn't had a press conference, and they yep. don't want to put him on the stage. It's no different than why they were hiding the guy in his basement in Wilmington, Delaware. I mean, you know, they don't want to put him out there. His policies stink. Oil prices, gas prices, gas I prices just, still going up, folks. Gas prices were Thanks, two dollars and fifty cents three months ago. Yeah. Today they're five fifty. Literally, gas prices in this country have gone up by three bucks in certain areas. It's insane. His policies suck. He's boring. They don't want to talk about it. And one other thing, honey, they're, they're absolutely petrified of Donald Trump in twenty twenty two because they know the Republicans are going to twenty four. No, no, no. They're oh. petrified of him in twenty twenty two because they know using his influence, right? He's we're gonna, gonna, we're going to take back the house because yeah. not only are we going to take back the house, so many of the people who were never really, you know, kind of the, the rhino Republicans. They're frankly, they put themselves into retirement, and you're going to have a new crop of people come in who are even going to be stronger than the house you have. So not only will you have the house, but you're going to have a stronger house, right? So, so that's one thing. They're also petrified of 2024, and that's why you see, look, look, at, look at the way they weaponize the legal system. Look at the way they weaponize it's the legal disgusting. system in, in the state where yeah. you literally have, you have you know, attorney generals and district attorneys who ran on the promise of, of getting Trump, of suing the hell out of Donald Trump, getting her him name out, is Letitia James, getting her him out of the White House, making his life miserable. And guys, like, wh- when do the politics stop? Wh- when do they stop? Like, it's one thing to say, listen, I, you know, I think we should build a pipeline, and uh, you know, and I, I don't, and I think we should use solar panels, and I think we should use natural gas. All right, fine, those are reasonable arguments. But at, at what point do you have to be so perverse? You know. That the level of hatred toward your opponent, towards so I mean, it's um, it's so bad for for the country. And again, I, I hate to go back to the China thing, but our adversaries around the world are laughing. Oh at my us. gosh! They're of laughing. course they are. We look ridiculous to them. We look like complete fools. That they're focused on a dog charity instead of the fact that we have. The border Patrol, who is begging for help on our southern border. We have facilities that are at over 700 percent capacity on our southern border because Joe Biden invited everybody in the world into America when he ran for you know, office. He said, we got an open border. We'll pay for your health care. Bring everybody in. We got caravans of people crowding our southern border, half of them probably with COVID. We don't even know what the ramifications well, of remember, this are. Honey, you remember... And we're not even paying attention to it with Remember, our, our Trump media. Remember, Trump was putting people in cages. Now, oh, God. the most humane thing about, about immigration under my father is no one was making the trip north because they knew it was going to be much tougher. That's actually a very humane thing, right? Yeah, because this trip, by the way, is so dangerous and so treacherous. We've all seen the videos and photos of these like children that are drowned in the Rio Grande as they're crossing. The the women that, that come up through the southern border, a quarter of them are sexually assaulted, and it's probably a sure. lot higher than that. You're right. The best thing you could possibly do, the, the most humane thing and conscionable thing to do would be to say never make that trip because it is so dangerous. And if you come to our southern border, we want to have immigrants in America, but you have to come in the legal way. you got to go through the process. That is the best thing to do. Illegal immigration went down by 90 percent under 
my father's leadership. And now you look at it where 100 and, you know, 110, 120, 130,000 people are coming in a month. And by the way, you know who's laughing all the way to the bank? The cartels. Oh, the, the yeah. Car- the cartels. This is who, a dream for them. That's all they, you know, they do drugs. They do human trafficking, trafficking yeah. right, where they're, they're making every single person who comes up, you know, pay large stipends of money um, for the privilege of being able to walk across their quote-unquote turf. The cartels are laughing all the way to the bank. People are... Are, are dying. There's nothing humane about what's happening. It's actually the least humane thing. And guess what? And Biden's leaving that gap in the wall that's, uh, you know, 40 feet wide, allowing people to walk in totally unchecked. It's, um, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. And you know what? The, the media ignores it. They say, yes, they're very humane. These, these facilities are very humane. Yet, you know, under my father, when you had one-tenth the amount of people in there, they were called locking kids in cages. And um, but I think it's got to stop. I it think, has to stop. Look, the reality is you kind of alluded to this. The media needs your dad. The mainstream media yeah. is desperate to keep Donald Trump around and to talk about him because Joe Biden is boring. <laughs> Joe Biden doesn't give them anything. The greatest is when your dad used to come out on the way to Marine One and say, OK, let's go. Who's got a question? That was let's really speak to the fake news. That was really amazing. They 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 loved to hate him and they need him desperately. So Ultimately, I think that's what this is all about. Look, whatever happens, um, I, I hope some of these people realize the damage that they're causing. I hope they realize that we're trying to do good things for, for people, for animals, whatever it is. In fact, our two dogs are here. They've been stepping on my microphone the entire time because that's the kind of family we are. We've got dogs in the studio. Um, but but truly, it, it's so disturbing to see what has happened, the links that they'll go to. Uh, I hope some of these people have a bit of a conscience. I hope when they lay their heads down at night, they realize that you might think you're hurting our family. You're ultimately hurting kids with cancer. You're ultimately hurting, you know, dogs out there that otherwise could be rescued, that would have great homes. Um, We don't do these things to to get attention. We do them because they're the right things to do. So with that said, I want to say thank you to my husband, Eric, for joining us today. What a great conversation. No commercial break. We just went straight through because it was so good. Um, And we hope that you'll come back and visit us very soon. Thank you, honey. I love being on your show, and I love you very much. Oh, thank you very much. All right, everybody. Well, that'll do it tonight for us right here on The Right View. We will see you back here next time.